1975, there's a look inside the iconic Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the New Orleans Saints. It's Blake Groupie to get this one started, and off we go here in New Orleans. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone, and he returns this to the 22. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Singletary to get the and oh right away he lost the football on oh, one of the linebackers has got it and they're already in the red zone the 18 yard line is where they take over as you and I both know one reason team script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time I will guarantee you that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one there? No, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. So after the fumble recovery, it's Carr complete. It's Johnson. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here's a second and eight. going to throw. They'll get this out to Kamara. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. First and goal. A chance to convert that early turnover into points. 
Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Alvin Kamara taking it in from seven yards away. And the Saints take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Sometimes you get a front to go and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. Shot from the one on second and goal. Carr. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Foster Moreau from a yard out. And the Saints will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. So second and goal there from the one. They go to the air. And the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence. Second down is always kind of the, do they throw it, do they run it? They worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it's good as the Saints have a seven to nothing lead. A drive there of just four plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. He's got to clear his mind a little bit right now. One carry, and that carry was a lost fumble. Clear his mind, clear his hands, and, this, and just let this one go. Sometimes it happens. He dropped the ball, got a full game ahead of him, Hand it to him again, see if they can start to produce. Mechie, the man in motion. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tyron Matthew there to make the tackle. He's already put it on the ground once in this first half. There are no gain, just struggling to get going. Yeah, and what he needs right now, a dose of confidence, which means his guys have to chop a hole, the big one for him, give him a chance to run a little bit and gain some of that confidence back. He didn't get it on that carry. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. And Stroud now to throw. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Colin Saunders, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. A 
tough spot here. Third and 15. A shotgun snap to Stroud. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better, had time to survey the field, and still couldn't find an open receiver. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here's Carr. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Garrett Stingley picks it, and a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And they'll take over here following the interception with a chance to tie the ball game. It's first and ten. Stroud off the play fake. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. Well, they certainly knew their challenge as this series began, and they got a stop on play number one. Goal now, get two more stops and limit the damage to a field goal. Second and ten. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Here's third and three. Stroud to throw it. Now they go screen. It's complete. Touchdown! Devin Singletary from 21 yards away. And the Texans are an extra point away from drawing level. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, wherever the screen guy is. And of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield Kaimi for Fairbairn. the touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7.
scoring summary three play drive and it results in the Texans finding the end zone So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Here now, second and four. From the gun, it's Carr. He gets it complete to A.T. Perry. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. First time these two have... And now following that last play, I do believe we're going to get a review here. Yes, indeed, the red flag is out. those feet in bounds that's the question they've got to decide and I got to say watching it in real time it was awfully close yeah it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it which could complicate things but even with the benefit of replay that's pretty tight well here's the call So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Carr. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. The car's throw caught by Alave. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series... Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Saints. A great play there. 58 yards. And the Saints have moved down in front. Seeing some pretty good offense here in this first quarter. It's been a wild start to this quarter, as you noted. And now with that lead that we're seeing, can they retaliate? I get the sense this one's going to go back and forth all game long. And that probably won't be the last long touchdown that we see in this one. Here's Groupie for the PAT. He 
It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that drive span five plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Texans back out there and ready to go. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They go right back to Singletary. He'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Stroud on third down now. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. On fourth down, out is the putter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now the Saints coming back out ready to go for this next drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. but. Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. 
Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. Shotgun now for Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Now Carr. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Back to throw here. He'll find Shahid out to the right. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes his fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. I like the fact that they didn't overcomplicate things on that call. Third and two, just run the quick little hitch, which they did. Ball's out of quarterback's hands, and yes, indeed, they pick up the first down. First and 10, here's Carr. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Sheldon Rankins, give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. But well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. To throw his car. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. Picked off by Steven Nelson. And the Texans are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. But to me, it's pretty simple, and it's fairly obvious, isn't it? He's got to start making better decisions with the ball. That's now two interceptions in the first quarter. After interception number one, there was a long talk on the sideline, and now he's made another mistake. Yeah, he's just been kind of laying these passes out there. He's kind of been floating them a little bit. He's got to be more decisive in his reads and definitely more decisive in throwing the ball. Rifle it in there every now and then. Stroud to the air on first and 10. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play 
never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Cameron Jordan so tough to block as he gets in there to record the sack. That play was hard to see. One play goes wrong, and all of a sudden it's third and very long, but they had been in second and inches. Yeah, I know you like the idea of taking I a do. shot on second I and do. inches, <laughs> but you can't take a sack for that big of a loss. That's the one thing you cannot do. They gave it up, and now they're way behind the chains. Good luck with this next play call. Tough spot here, third down and 11. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alante Taylor. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Third and long that time, he was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him. And what I mean by that is what you said, third and long. Got to push it down, feel to try to pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation. And they took advantage of the young man right there. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. But they find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. <laughs> Through one corner, 14-7 our score. Ready for the second quarter from New Orleans. It's the Saints in possession as they've got the first and ten. the middle and he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there no gain on the play there second down and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends they're like in a sprinter stance they're just headed straight for the quarterback that was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain and that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. 
The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and 10. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and the Texans force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. From the 34-yard line here, second and three. Throwing now is Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Schultz. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now a second and 10. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. They'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage, got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. On the give, this is Singletary. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. a slight detour on what's been a strong drive here second and 11. Now Stroud a short one going to be taken in here by Schultz so five yards here five on the play and now third down and six to go that's a staple of this offense drag route to the tight end yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch but still an effective gain nonetheless so it's third and six and this will be the eighth play of the drive stroud 
And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods, a 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and we are tied at 14. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends with a Robert Woods touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. They start from scratch here, so to speak. 14 all following the interception last time that led to a score. Well, they've got it first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. That'll be taken in by Shahid. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. On play action, it's Carr. And the catch made by Johnson. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Give. This is Kamara. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven. They run it again with Kamara. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three from midfield. Here's Carr. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Well, with the problems they've had giving away the football in this first half, they've got to be over the moon that this is still a tie ball game. So here's where a quarterback has to move the turnovers to the back of his mind and focus on the present. And that's a good throw there to pick up a first down. Yeah. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Carr gets this complete to Shahid. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. So that's now four completions in a row, a good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Again, it's Carr. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he comes back with one complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. A tenth carry for Kamara. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. 49 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Set up the screen now to Kamara. Touchdown! Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Saints have moved down in front. for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And it's polished off through the air with a touchdown to Alvin Kamara. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. C.J. Stroud ready to lead the Texans on their next drive. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate, the receivers catch it, the ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, the ball never hits the ground there either. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Caught by Woods. 
And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. A give, Singletary right side. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Singletary again. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Ball on the 39. Here's second and four. Woods, the receiver, in motion left. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. It's interesting, going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage, and we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they've bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. That's complete. It's Collins. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Stroud looking to throw. That'll be caught left side by Woods. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Back to throw. Stroud. Oh, leaping, and he makes the grab. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll look to throw again. And he is going to go down. 
Back at the 11-yard line. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? Being chased out left. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. I did like his decision making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down. And don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. Pierce. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that'll bring him back within four. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Now a play fake. Carr. He completes it to Alave. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's Carr to throw. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back and maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Here's a second and five. Car. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. So 
So on fourth down, on is Lou Headley to punt for New Orleans. Desmond King deep for Houston. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. So we've reached halftime here in a four point game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports halftime report. For the Saints, this is why they signed him. They got a strong performance from their quarterback, Derek Carr. He got off to a hot start with two first quarter touchdown passes, threw another for good measure in the second quarter. So he has been on target throughout. Okay, coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. And it was somewhat of a strange first half. He threw three interceptions, yet you look at the scoreboard, they've got the lead. So you know what I think he did at the half? He stood up in front of the team, especially in front of the defense, and said, thank you. Appreciate what you've done. You guys have picked me up in a big way. And guess what? I'm going to get back to being who I am, which is pretty darn good. Let's go play the second half. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Slant pass complete to Alave. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. To throw, it's Carr. That is caught. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. Throwing now is Carr. Again, it's Johnson. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and seven. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. That one on the guard, Cesar Ruiz. And 
that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Car to throw again. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 34-yard line. Well, they found him eight times in that first half, and this is his first catch of quarter number three. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 60 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Again, it's Kamara. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Second and five. Here's Carr. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Well, sometimes despite the best planning, the defense actually has a plan as well, and they blanketed everyone on that play. They were able to close it down and spill him for a loss. Third down and six. Carr going to throw. Complete to Alave on the out route. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara with his second touchdown of the night. And the Saints take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Here's Groupie for the PAT. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. 
They make their second half debut here. Things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. First and ten, it's Stroud. This is caught. It's Woods. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So a roughing the passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they've still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And the official won't even think twice about pulling his flag on that one. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Hand off right side to Pierce. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It was Cameron Jordan who came in and got him. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game. And this won't help things either. A loss on that play. Play of the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Stroud to throw it. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now we're going to get another look at this one. Dennis Allen not happy, so he has thrown the challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. Stroud now on first and ten. On a slant, here's Collins. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down, ball on the three. First down marker at the one-yard line. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. 
Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Now here's Stroud on third down. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Brevin Jordan from four yards out. And the Texans have got it back to within a score. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... You throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. But D'Amico Ryans, even with the defensive mindset, he'll elect to go for two here. And they'll try to run it in with Singletary. And he's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage. The defense left him with nowhere to go. And the try for two is denied. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. Yeah, this is going to put him back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Now Carr. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, back door to and that time worked well for a solid game. Second down and three. Now a handoff. Here's Kamara. And he'll take this to about the 24, a gain of three. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They stay on the ground. This time, it's Williams. And this will wind up a Saints first down as he gets this up past the 30. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. of scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. A busy night continues for Kamara and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down. 
But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Now they'll throw with Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Third down and one. To throw his car. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now Carr. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Looking to throw. Carr. The pass caught by Alave. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Back to throw. Carr. Can't get away. He's taken down. Jonathan Grenard with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. C.J. Stroud and the offense back out there. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants. He has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. Singletary to get the drive started. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And Stroud now to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. 
They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the handoff, running left, Singletary. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Thirty-eight-yard line, second and nine. They go right back to Singletary. Stopped up shy of the forty-five, despite some pretty powerful running. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, "I like to keep carrying it." Thank you. And this offense on third down today, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10, down at the 33. Stroud shoves him away, and he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown, and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Mechie, the man in motion. They run here with Singletary. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Again, it'll be Singletary. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. <laughs> They've thrown for three touchdown passes now. Here, I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so. But ordinarily, second down is when you run your play fake, your play action, show run, and throw the ball. Now they brought up third down and have to throw it anyway. For the lead, here's third and goal. Here's Stroud. The pass finds Mechie in the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Texans have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it. The fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? A big spot now for the Texans as they'll try for two. And they'll try to run it in with Singletary. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. I think we can figure out why they went for two there, right? Up one, you want to make it a field goal difference if at all possible. They didn't get it, 
Now they've got to play some defense down the stretch. Yeah, not much margin for air now for your D. They just have to get it into range. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. On the return, here's Shahid. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Boy, tight game like this, fourth quarter, personal foul penalties, a no-no. Yeah, we know the emotions are running high, the tensions are the same. Who can control them best could ultimately win it. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and 10. Looking to throw. Carr. Alave holds it in. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Big Sheldon Rankin's there to bring him down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. I used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Stop short of the 25, and that second effort got him a couple extra. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Carr. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Jonathan Grenard able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This for a fourth quarter lead. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. And that'll keep this a one-point game. Robert Woods and the Texans back out there. He's been a load for them to handle defensively. I know that much. Well, look at him. He's got seven catches on the game, and he's starting to shred them a little bit because not only is he catching them, he's picking up good yardage, keeping the chains moving, ball control, you name it. This big guy, what did you say? He's been a load for them to handle? That's right. He's Agreed. Been, this seven catches, as you said, over 100 yards. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And they certainly caught a big break with that missed field goal. Instead of trailing, they hold on to that slim lead. And now we'll see how they play this critical fourth quarter possession. And Stroud wisely slides down safely after picking up the first down. 
Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. This is second and eight. Stroud working out of the gun. This ball caught by Mechie. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. These guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. They'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. Some good strong running right there, some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Throwing now is Stroud. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Texans will add to their fourth-quarter lead. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around, they're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. 
There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. He'll start with a give to Kamara. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From the gun, it's Carr. This one taken in by Alave. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And with that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. They'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Ball on the 47 yard line, here's second and six. Carn out of throw. Little short pass here to Hill. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Third and three. From midfield, here's Carr. On the move past the 40. And finally brought down at the 38. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. And that's a much needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to the ground, it's Kamara. What a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. 98 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch victory. Throwing on first down is Carr. And that went to the right side and incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. He'll look to throw. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Will Anderson, his second sack of the night. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night.
A big play needed, no doubt. Third and long. Now Carr. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Fairbear now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So time for Carr and the Saints. Down by 15. 201 remaining. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning. try again after the pick six he's got his target it's Alave and they're able to get this one across the 35 so it's Saints football as we get you reset they've got a first and ten as they search for a late score a two timeouts still remaining but scoring quickly a must it's first and ten throwing his car Connecting with Johnson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Under 90 seconds to go. Here's second and 10. Carr. A quick throw there is incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. Car to throw. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Jalen Petrie picks it off. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? 
I would think about it, and I think about it awfully hard, but also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player, you have to know the situation. Got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. the Texans look to let the clock roll. attitude right just us against the world and get it done <laughs> how happy are they i remember a coach at a previous stop tell me you get a win on the road doesn't matter the opponent get out of there like you stole something and they, <laughs> they did in this one <laughs> on is the punter johnston now as he sends this one away come on baby Pow! Welcome to the NFL, baby. and as this defense walks off the field they can do so with their heads held high what a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. It certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.